Hi everybody, it's Dr. Mary Claire Haver and I'm here today to talk about female pattern hair loss. I posted a uh, video earlier today with my favorite way to treat my own hair loss in menopause and it seems to have gotten some traction so I thought I'd come on live to give a little bit more information and answer some questions that you guys may have about treating female pattern hair loss. So for those of you who don't know me, I am Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I am a OBGYN, board certified. I'm also the creator and founder of the Galveston Diet, and I am a certified culinary medicine specialist. So I love talking about midlife and menopause and normalizing the conversation about midlife and menopause and the changes we go through as women and how to best combat them. Um, I have a lot of followers now, at least for me, for a 53-year-old mom on TikTok, much to my children's fascination and horror. Um, and so if they knew I was on here today talking about female pattern hair loss, they would be mortified. Um, but it's better than me dancing around for you guys. So if you have questions, I will try to answer them at the end of this talk. Uh, go ahead and put them in the question box down here below. Um, and if you have a chance, please follow me, like this video, and share this video if there's anyone that you think would benefit um, from uh, this video talking about female pattern hair loss. So noticeable hair loss in women can be deeply distressing. <laughs> Um, there are some medical treatments that can help, uh, definitely. About a third of women experience hair loss or what we call alopecia in medicine at some time in our lives. Among postmenopausal women, about two thirds of us suffer from hair loss, hair thinning, or even bald spots. Um, yes, I am 53 years old. I just turned 53 last week, so, well, two weeks ago, August 17th. Um, so it's funny that more men lose hair but the social impact and the emotional impact is much greater on women than it is on men um, because it's less socially acceptable for us to lose hair. My husband is bald. My husband is completely bald, does not bother him. It bothered him when he figured out he was losing hair in his 20s, but now he doesn't care. If I lost all my hair, I would die. So um, it would be a kind of a big deal for me. So I get it. The emotional impact of losing hair um, is really rough for us as women. So um, the main type of hair loss in women is actually the exact same as why men are losing it. Um, it's called androgenic alopecia. Um, or female or male pattern hair loss. In men, the hair loss usually begins at the temples, receding, and then that characteristic M shape on the top of their head, um, and also often progresses to baldness, as it did in my husband. In women, um, androgenic alopecia gradually, it begins usually as gradual thinning at the part line, which is where I noticed mine was more here in my part, because I, you know, of course I'm 53, so I have a side part. <laughs> Like my kids hate my side part, but here's my part. This is what I do. And I was noticing dramatic thinning in here. Like I could see scalp. And when I pulled my ponytail back, you could see my scalp. So, um, okay. So a uh, woman's hairline rarely recedes. A lot of us don't have a receding hairline, not like a man. We just kind of start losing it thinning um, in, in ages. So there. So before I kind of launch into this, I want everybody to understand that there are many things that can lead to hair loss in a woman. The main reason is hormone changes associated with menopause. However, nutritional deficiencies can do it. Stress can do it, of course. Pregnancy can do it, which is hormone driven. Um, we can have something called telogen effluvium, which happens after a big stress life event or after a pregnancy where um, you lose kind of hair all at once or over a short period of time. Um, at least in the post-pregnancy telogen, and telogen effluvium, um, as long as you remove the stressor, then um, the hair will grow back, but it takes about a year. Um, so it's important if you're not sure or if you're, or feel like, you know, you're losing hair that's not related to menopause that you go and see a dermatologist as soon as possible to get an evaluation to make sure you're not missing a, um, form of hair loss that can be treated with a different kind of medication. Okay. So, um, 
All right, so almost every woman um, will eventually develop some kind of female hair loss. It's just when you decide that you're noticing it and it's important to you to be treated. Um, oh, telogen effluvium, um, T-E-L-O-G-E-N-E-F-F. L-U-V-I-U-M, like you went through a divorce, you found out someone was cheating, you had someone, you know, you went through this big emotional stressor, like huge, okay, like hurricane, lost your house, death of a loved one, divorce, you know, infidelity, whatever, something that big, and then three, four months later, you notice your hair's coming out in chunks in the bathroom, that's, that is a stress-related hair loss, um, and it's called telogen effluvium, um, However, the vast majority of us suffer from androgenic alopecia, which is hormone-related hair loss. So, um, so in either sex, androgenic alopecia occurs because a genetically determined shortening of anagen, which is the hair's growing phase, and the lengthening of time between the shedding of the hair and the start of the new anagen phase. So remember, hair has a life cycle. We have a growing phase, a resting phase, and a falling out phase. Anagen, telogen, um, you know, the, the, and so they kind of a third of our hair is in resting, a third of our hair is in growing, and a third of our hair is in the falling out phase, typically before menopause. Then when we start having hormone changes associated with menopause, we have shortening and lengthening of the cycles, so that leads to excessive hair loss, and that's what's going on um, in women. So, um, so there are... It takes longer for hair to start growing back and it's shed quicker, basically, is what's happening in menopause. Um, the hair follicle itself also changes. It shrinks and producing a shorter, thinner hair shaft called follicular miniaturization. Big fancy word. Um, as a result, the thicker, pigmented, long-lived terminal hairs are replaced by shorter, thinner, non-pigmented hair, non hairs called vellus. Okay, so that was kind of the science behind what's going on. Um, so a doctor will diagnose female pattern hair loss by history and examining the scalp. Um, we, they want to check for inflammation. So if you have like, there's certain fungal infections in the scalp that can lead to, um, hair loss. You can, you need to check for hypothyroidism that absolutely can lose, lead to hair loss. Um, there are certain things like pulling your hair back tight ponytails, you know, that can cause breakage or weakening of the hair follicles. So there's a lot of reasons that we lose hair and we don't want to miss those other treatments, but, um, so unless there are signs of androgen excess, like at sudden onset of acne, menstrual irregularities, unwanted hair growth in new places, besides the occasional little, um, then hormone evaluation is not necessary before you can begin treatment um, for this. So how do we stop this? What can we do about it? So that's what everybody's here for, what everybody wants to know. Um, the number one treatment for androgenic hair loss across the board is going to be minoxidil. And I talk about this in my TikTok video. Minoxidil is, um, and you wanna do 5% extra strength, get the generic. I use the Kirkland brand from Amazon. I get a, bo a box with five little bottles for like 25 bucks. And it lasts me for six months about. Um, so um, the drug was inter initially introduced as a treatment for high blood pressure, but people took it and noticed they were growing hair in places that they had lost it. So research studies confirm that minoxidil applied directly to the scalp can stimulate hair growth. Um, and so they only have approved, the FDA approved 2% in women and 5% in men. Ignore that, ignore that, ignore that. Rarely do I say ignore the FDA, this is a time. Go ahead and use the high strength 5%. Um, so clearly min minoxidil is not a miracle drug. Okay. Let me say that. I love it. It's working for me. I'm very happy with my results, but it is not a miracle. It does not work for everyone. It can produce new growth, fine growth. So look at these baby hairs. This is all minoxidil hair growth. These guys, that's new. Okay. That is minoxidil. Very few side effects for minoxidil. It's very safe to use topically. You don't want to drink it. You put it on your scalp, okay? Some people you know, think it makes their hair oily or they're crusty or whatever, but most people tolerate it really, really well. Um, it's not a quick fix. This is the other thing. It takes months to grow your hair back. You must be patient. You must use it religiously. You cannot, you know, don't give up on it. Give yourself six months to see a difference, okay? Um, so the effect peaks around four months, but it could take longer. So your trial is six to 12 months on minoxidil. If it works for you, you must keep using it because your hair will shift right back to where it was when you stopped using it. So I have a lifetime relationship with my minoxidil. <laughs> and thank 
God, it is safe. Um, it is non-hormonal um, and it basically blocks the um, action of dihydrotestosterone at the level of the hair follicle. So what's going on with the menopause that leads to this? Okay, so, and I talk a lot about this phenomena. Um, minoxidil, okay, so when we start going through menopause, our estrogen levels start declining. Okay, everybody knows this, It's a, but it's a very sporadic kind of bouncing around decline over time like this, which is why our periods can be normal and then cattywampus and then normal again and our symptoms can kind of come and go during perimenopause. But overall, the trend is down. When we start decreasing our estrogen levels, the liver stops producing something called steroid hormone binding globulin or decreases. So as estrogen levels go down, the production of this binding globulin decreases. Why is this important? Who cares, Dr. Haver? I'm like, it's very important because we do not have a storage facility for hormones in our, for sex hormones in our body. Okay. We don't store them in fat. They're created in fat. We don't, we don't have a pocket where we shove extra steroid hormone. They float around the bloodstream. They're either free or they're bound and they're bound to this binding globulin. So the more binding globulin you have, the less free and activity level of estrogen or testosterone or androgens you know, or estrone or estrel, all of our sex hormones are bound. And when they're free, they're active. They can go and bind to the receptors and do what they need to do. But when they're bound, they're inactive. They're just there, but they're floating around and then they pop off the binding globulin and go do their job until they're degraded. Okay. No storage facility. So estrogen levels go down, binding globulin goes down. When our binding globulin goes down, less of the sex hormones are bound. So there are more activity. So that is why some people have don't notice they're in menopause though their estrogen levels are declining the activity of the estrogen is higher because they don't have as much bound it's more free so it can do its job okay same thing's happening with androgens androgen production does not decrease at an equal amount it decreases a little bit okay because we don't have that much androgens in our body we're women we don't make that much okay we're supposed to have low levels However, the activity increases as the binding globulin goes down. So that is why as our androgen activity increases, you start developing unwanted hair growth. I have Fred and Ginger, these two hairs that grow little spikes, little um, whiskers that pop out every few weeks, um, probably due to when I was going through perimenopause and my androgen activity increased. Um, it's also why we have increased belly fat in perimenopause. This is why. Okay, not you working out and raising your cortisol level or drinking black coffee and raising your cortisol level or all the ridiculous things that I see people repeat on the internet that is absolutely not based in medical fact. It was someone's random opinion and they tried to sell you some potion to make it stop. Okay, but here's what's happening. Androgen drives fat to the belly. So the increasing belly fat is almost 100% related to increasing androgen levels. Hair loss, hair growth, belly fat, all androgen related because the activity of our androgens increase okay due to the steroid hormone binding globulin decrease so that is what's happening so here are our options hormone replacement therapy can be helpful with hair loss it's not great it's okay okay some women say oh yeah it's wonderful but you know it's not it's just okay um, because hormone replacement therapy, as far as estrogen and progesterone, is not going to affect your body's production of androgens. They're still there. Now, it will bind them up and make them less active. So that's why some women see an Im improvement in symptoms. Um, the other way that all the medications treat the hair loss is to block the activity of the dihydrotestosterone receptor. Okay, so DH, so testosterone is converted to DHT. DHT is what binds to the hair follicle and causes these changes. Okay, this is why this is happening. Androgen levels go, activity goes up, DHT is uh, produced, and then so so spironolactone and finasteride they work at the level of um, the receptor, the DHT receptor, basically blocking them, so that DHT can't really work at that uh, and do what it does. So then we see the hair. Uh, you start decreasing the amount of hair that you have lost. Whereas um, the minoxidil causes hair growth. Does that make sense? So some women need treatment with multiple things. So first line therapy is always going to be minoxidil. Also making sure you don't have hypothyroidism, you don't have a nutritional deficiency, iron deficiency can do it, zinc deficiency can do it. A lot of things can do it. So, and then your doctor may prescribe, if you're premenopausal, your doctor may prescribe a combined birth control pill plus spironolactone, those two work really, really well. 
Um, Postmenopause, they may say finasteride, which is a cousin to finasteride. Now, if now the like my girls are on this or they were um yaz and yasmin's respironone is an analog of spironolactone so for hair loss and acne a lot of doctors will prescribe that particular birth control pill because it's kind of a double whammy to help treat the hair loss especially if you are pre-menopausal so um let's see uh so how to use minoxidil um so i buy the bottle it comes with a dropper i don't like the dropper it's dri thick and messy and it drips all over my face i get a spray bottle a cheap spray bottle from the dollar store about two and a half ounces i just pour the bottle in there and then i part my hair and i spray it on the scalp I just part, spray, part, spray. And if you go back and watch the TikTok video, I show you actually doing it. And then I brush it through and massage it in with my fingers. And I go to, and I wait and like, and I do that an hour before bed. And then I go to bed, get up in the morning, wash my hair. If I need to have it washed, I put it in last night. So my hair doesn't look that bad. Um, so now minoxidil might for some people cause heart palpitations or other side effects. You just have to see if it's going to affect you that way and then stop it. But most, for vast majority of people, um, so let's see, um, minoxidil uses alcohol as its um, um, the dissolving agent. And so some people can have, um, uh, the new hair differs in color and texture from the surrounding hair and the alcohol can cause some irritation to the scalp. Um, so except you can also have hypertrichosis, which is excessive hair growth in places you don't want it. So if the minoxidil drips on your cheek, you could have like a little hairy patch on your cheek. Um, Let's see. Um, so anti-androgens, again, like I was talking about, include, um, so androgens are testosterone and dihydrotestosterone and other male hormones can accelerate hair loss in women. So for a woman who doesn't respond to minoxidil, you may also benefit to the addition of spironolactone, um, especially in PCOS. A lot of doctors, women who are having hair loss in PCOS are prescribing spironolactone. I absolutely would say get the 5% um, if you're going to do minoxidil. Um, Remember that spironolactone, uh, you need to be on contraception because it is a teratogen. Be very, very careful if you could be possibility that you're pregnant. And another thing a doctor, you know, is they're going to check, hopefully, is your iron studies to see if you possibly have an iron deficiency, which is leading to your hair loss. So um, uh, let's see. I'm looking at, so, you know, so it's important that you set an expectation of six to 12 months of treatment. If you're going to try minoxidil, you can do it over the counter. If you're, you know, if it's not working, I mean, you probably just should just go to your doctor, make sure you're, that you are ruling out the other causes of hair loss and nutritional deficiency or hypothyroidism, um, get those labs checked and then go ahead and start on your minoxidil. Um, if you're premenopausal, your doctor will probably prescribe a birth control pill to lower those, you know, to increase your steroid hormone binding globulin, decrease the ovarian production of androgens, and give you the one that contains drosperinone, which is an analog to spironolactone, or just give you spironolactone. If you're postmenopausal, finasteride is another really great option. Um, let's see. So if you've had, so I'm going to go to the questions in the question box down below and do my best to answer. Um, do I do one-on-one -on -one coaching? Um, not on the internet. I have a clinic um, that I do medical visits in uh, that I will be starting in October. So I will do some coaching in my medical clinic um, as a part of the visit, but um, I cannot do, my malpractice coverage will not cover me to do one-on-one -on -one coaching outside of a clinic setting. So no. Um, is there a type of spectrum for hair loss? Can you give me more information on this? So if you guys have a question, put it in the question box down here below. There's so many of you on live with comments and questions. It scrolls by so quickly, I can't really get to them. And make sure you check out the TikTok. Also, um, for those of you joining you, so many of you come in and out. I am Dr. Mary Claire Haver, creator and founder of the Galveston Diet. I'm a board certified obstetrician gynecologist. I'm also a certified culinary medicine specialist. And um, just trying to give you guys some more information and help about hair loss. So, um, no, I don't, I can't, you know, because I'm only licensed to practice medicine in Texas. So you have to come and see me in my office and I don't do telemedicine at this point. Um, so I miss patient care. I miss touching patients and, and visiting with patients. I, I resigned from my hospitalist position in June and I've had, it takes a while to build a clinic and to set everything up and I'm doing it all on my own. So I had to get my own malpractice insurance and all that stuff and get everything set up. 
Um, so I will start seeing patients in October. Uh, it's mostly going to be menopausal focus and a wellness clinic incorporating the Galveston diet. And I'll have a body scanner and lab work and all kind of wonderful things. Um, so uh, where in Texas in Friendswood outside of Houston is where I'm going to be practicing. Um, how many days a week do I use the minoxidil? I use it three to four. Um, I can't say I'm on a perfect schedule, but I kind of have it out on my counter. So at least three to four times a week. And I've been doing this for years, um, since probably late forties when I started noticing the hair loss. What do I think of pumpkin seed oil as a natural? So there are a couple of things that actually have been shown. Um, let me pull up the article one second. Natural hair loss remedies. So I know that rosemary um, oil or rosemary, like people who boil uh, rosemary in water to extract, um, ha it actually has been shown to be helpful. Um, let's see. Uh, alternative treatments for hair loss. Okay. So um, let me. Okay. So iron uh, is one of the things. So crucial nutrient helps your body make blood. Low levels are linked to hair loss. Um, so iron-rich foods like meat, fish, poultry, tofu, broccoli, all kinds of greens. Um, too much iron can have, make you constipated. Um, you probably want to go to your doctor and, and have your iron levels checked before you start taking um, a high level of iron supplement. Um, biotin, only if you're deficient in biotin is biotin going to help. And so um, it's really good for your skin. You can get plenty from the food you eat. Eggs, wheat, jar, mushrooms all contain high amounts of biot um, um, biotin, but uh, zinc has a very strong correlation with hair loss, people who are zinc deficient. Again, taking super physiologic doses of zinc will not make your hair grow extra strong, but if you're deficient, taking a zinc supplement will be helpful or eating foods rich in zinc. Um, so, um, Let's see, saw palmetto. Uh, some studies have shown that it can keep the male hormone testosterone from breaking down, which can help prevent hair loss. That's the DC, it's DHT, so it'll stop the trend, the, it will stop the, um, the production of DHT from testosterone. Um, the jury's kind of out on that one. There's not a lot of studies. It's cheap and it probably won't hurt. Um, Let's see, let's see. Sandalwood, lavender, rosemary, and thyme oils have been used to treat hair loss for over 100 years. The compound in them is thought to boost hair growth. You can try rubbing one or more of these oils into your scalp for at least two minutes every night, then wrap your head in a warm towel to help it absorb. The nightly massage smells good and can help you feel more relaxed. Um, let's see. Selenium, um, some hair growth supplements contain a nutrient called selenium. Um, it hasn't really been shown in humans. In animal studies, it's helpful, but it hasn't really been shown in humans. Melatonin has been shown to be a little bit helpful. Pumpkin seed oil, okay. Daily doses of pumpkin seed oil taken by mouth can be helpful. Um, it was a, while more research is needed, one small study found that men who took four ca capsules of pumpkin seed oil each day for six months saw their hair count increase by 40%. Pumpkin seed oil can block testosterone from changing into DHT, which is linked to hair loss. Okay, so that could be okay. Um, green tea. Uh, maybe the compound called EGCG that helps with hair growth difference between this. So they gave balding rats, uh, green tea for six months. It has not been tested in people. So, but you know, it's delicious, it's healthy and it's packed with antioxidants and anti-inflammatories. So try it might not, might be helpful. Um, so plasma rich, uh, PRP treatments. Um, so there are also, things that improve hair loss that increase blood flow to the scalp and just the overall health of the scalp. So you see those red light therapy, like my friend who has hypothyroidism and hair loss from that has this fancy, it looks like a giant headband that from Star Trek and she puts it on and the red light goes into her scalp and it, and basically that increases blood flow, which decreases inflammation, which helps, you know, can help with hair growth. So PRP, um, I've seen some aesthetic centers who do blood draws um, and they, they centrifuge out the platelet-rich plasma and then they inject it into different points of your scalp. Some people notice that the hair can grow back thicker than before, but that change is usually not permanent. 
Um, definitely, if you are deficient in certain amino acids, if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, um, the L-lysine and cysteine are really, really important for hair growth. So you need to make sure you're getting plenty of that in your diet. Um, let's see, I'm going to the questions, okay. Nutrafol is a very, very, very expensive uh, $90 a month. I don't think, I think your $5 for a bottle of minoxidil is going to go a lot further than Nutrafol. Um, not a fan. Uh, juicing for weight loss, not a fan. Not a fan. I believe in nutrition for for health and weight loss is a side of, uh, fat loss is a side effect. Remember, not all weight loss is equal. If you calorically restrict you're going to lose 50% of the weight that you lose as muscle, and that is not what you want. So I believe in, in focusing on nutrition, and fat loss is a pleasant side effect. I not, do not believe in juicing specifically for that. Um, uh, 2% or 5%, 5% always. Don't ignore it. Don't worry about the FDA. I rarely go against the FDA. This is one. There's nothing wrong with a woman doing 5%. Do the 5%. Do yourself a favor. And the 2%, you have to do twice a day. Forget that. Um, Let's see, uh, what blood work should you ask for for your GP, your 50? So um, I have a blog on this. If you go to galvestondiet.com and click on blogs, I have tests to maximize your well woman exam that you can discuss with your provider. Again, I can't guarantee that they'll draw them or that insurance will pay, but at least I can give you some talking points to see if maybe that you have certain symptoms that will be covered so that you can get these blood, this blood work done. Um, so yeah, go to uh, my blog at galvestondiet.com and um, you just, uh, and the link is here. So if you want to learn more about the Galveston Diet, our programs and everything we have to offer, we have meal plans, we have lots of things, click here. Oh, everybody like, like this video. Thank you so much. Um, that would be amazing. Um, and then click on this link. It'll take you to the top of my TikTok page. And there is a, a bolded link there that'll take you to our menopause quiz, to our inflammation quiz, and to the website. Scroll down. There's blogs. There's links, recipes all down there. Um, cheapest minoxidil brand. I use the Kirkland's on Amazon. Kirkland's brand. So, um, It depends on what kind of hair loss you have. If it's in the crown, it can regrow. Um, you know, mine regrew, so it depends on why you're losing the hair. And usually if it's due to, um, if it's not scarring, if, it's, if you scar the hair follicle, the hair follicle's dead. But if the hair follicle's still functional, you can regrow some hair. It may not ever be as thick or color different, whatever, or texture even different, but you should be able to get some hair growth back. I use Minoxidil 5% Kirkland's brand three to four times a week at night. Is a hair loss specialist worth it or dermatologist okay? I would try Derm. Just go cheap first and let them refer you if they can't figure it out. Um, Yes, yeah, so the minoxidil, I put in a spray bottle. So I buy the bottle with a dropper, I throw the dropper out, I pour it into a cheap spray bottle I got from the dollar store, uh, and then I part my hair at night. You know, I just part it with my fingers and I spray, spray, part, spray, spray, part, spray, spray, blah, blah, blah. and then I lift a big chunk up in the back and spray back there. Then I brush it, then I do a massage into the scalp to help with, and then I go to bed. I mean, I, you know, do whatever I need to do for the evening, and then I go to bed. So, um, um, I'm not an expert in hypothyroidism. I'm just a gynecologist. And so really you'd have to talk to an endocrinologist. Remember that supplements are meant to supplement a nutritious diet. I don't recommend blanket supplements for everyone except for maybe fiber and omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin D. <laughs> I say never, but I do. Um, so, but I mean, I, if you have a deficiency state, you know, eating foods rich in those nutrients will bring you back up to where you need to be. But sometimes people live in an area where they don't have access to those kind of foods like salmon. They don't have, or they don't like it, or they're allergic, or they're vegan or vegetarian. And those people in order to survive must supplement to get the nutrients that they need. So for just blanket hypothyroidism, I can't really, you know, it's not my area of expertise, so you really need to talk to your um, physician about it. Um, fibroids do not have an effect on hair loss. They do not. So that's, I can reassure you that 100%. What vitamins for hair loss? 
it depends on why you're losing hair. If you're deficient in zinc or deficient in iron or deficient in whatever, and that's causing your hair loss, then absolutely you should eat foods rich in that and consider supplementation. Um, oh, what kinds can... Is a derma roller beneficial for hair loss? I have not seen it. And I read on this stuff all the time. I've not seen a derma roller be beneficial in hair loss. I'm not saying it's not. I have not seen any studies to um, support that. Um, what brand of minoxidil can you get in the UK? I have no idea. I practice in the US, so I have no idea how to get it in the UK. Um, I'm so sorry. If anybody is from the UK and using minoxidil, can you please comment and help this uh, woman out? I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, don't do the foam. Do the dropper. Throw the dropper out. Get a spray bottle. That is my tip to you. Free, whatever. Works like a charm. And that way I don't get the drips coming down my forehead and then having weird hair growth over here. So do the spray. Um, yes, I've colored my hair since I was 25 years old and I've used minoxidil for the last six, seven years. It's no problem. Um, whew. okay. If you're hyperthyroid and you're doing 5%, you're still losing hair, then it's time to go to the doctor. There's probably something else going on outside or you need it. You need another prescription. So, um, you know, if minoxidil is not working, are not giving you the results you want, you need to go see your doctor for further evaluation. Yes, you can use it on the eyebrow. Just get a little brush, dip it in. That's what I do. And, and do it over your um, eyebrows. Just, just not, don't let it drip. You don't want it to drip into your eyes. Um, if you take minoxidil and it's working, you are going to have a lifelong relationship with minoxidil or as long as you care about your hair loss. Because once you stop using it, you will go back to what you were. You cannot... You can't undo the physiology. All you can do is mask the symptoms, okay? Um, let's see. I'm reading the questions, guys. Would spironolactone help in surgical menopause? I don't know. Uh, yeah. But fin they usually postmenopausal, they recommend finasteride, finasteride. So that's something you want to talk to your gynecologist about. Um, let's see. If you guys have questions, put it in the question box down below. Let's see. Um, can women use men's minoxidil? Yes. Get the extra strength. Get the 5%. Ignore that it's not for women. Don't do it. You want to get the extra strength. Absolutely. Okay, guys. Oh, go ahead and like. If you're new, like my video. Thank you so much. And um, if you have questions, put them in the question box down below. Please feel free to share this video with anyone who you think would be... Um, you think it would be helpful for and make sure you follow me because i come on live lots and love sharing information with you guys as much as possible um if you have hair loss with a little bit of itching this could be a sign of infection so this is definitely something you want to visit your doctor about and get some evaluation and treatment um so uh am i vaccinated why are you asking me that i'm a doctor 97% of us are vaccinated. So yeah, I am. I'm not in the 3%. I was one of the very first in Houston to get vaccinated. So yeah, I felt that it was important to protect my family because I worked in a hospital and was around COVID patients every single day. And so of course I'm vaccinated. I'm a doctor. I'm a board certified medical physician. So yeah, I am. Um, so, but why would you ask me that? We're talking about hair loss. I don't like how people get political on pages. Um, but yeah, of course I'm vaccinated. I'm a doctor. Um, what is the name of the product that begins with an M? Minoxidil. M-I-N-O-X-I-D-I-L. That is the generic name for um, Rogaine. So um, it's, it's, they've lost their patent. There's multiple options out there. It's so cheap. I use the Kirkland's brand, extra strength, 5%. So, um, no, iron supplements do not cause weight gain. Never. Nope. Uh, can men on testosterone replacement use minoxidil? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, you need to talk to your doctor, but minoxidil was developed as a treatment for high blood pressure. <laughs> and people who were taking it orally noticed that they were growing hair in places where they lost it. So they did some more testing and turns out it was a better hair growth medication than blood pressure medication. So talk to, always talk to your own personal physician first about drug-drug interactions. I cannot answer that for you. Um, but it's a blood pressure medicine. <laughs> um, 
Let's see. Uh, you're losing your hair extremely rapidly, fast, and bald. Okay, you need to go see your doctor. If you are just, it's falling out in chunks, this is probably more than just the um, uh, androgenic hair loss. This is something more serious, and you need to go see your doctor ASAP for lab testing and evaluation and management. Um, Okay, I'm looking at the questions, guys. Uh, where do I practice? Would love to be a client. So I'll tell you some background. So I um, graduated from my training residency in, I'm so old, 2002. And I went to practice in Houston. So I was a straight up private ob did babies, surgeries, all the things. And then after three years of that, I came back to Galveston um, in an academic setting. So I came back to the place I trained and became an academic practitioner where I taught residents and med students and I had a clinic private practice through the university. And I did that off and on um, till 1998, oh no, 2018, oh my God, 2018. So I had a two year hiatus where my husband accepted a position uh, in, right after Hurricane Ike where our island was wiped out. So those of you from Louisiana who are going through the hurricane, sister, I have been through it. I lost my house. I mean, I, my house was unlivable uh, for six weeks. We had to live in an apartment with another family off the island. My kids had to switch schools three times that year. I mean, I get it. You will survive. This is doable and uh, we're in such a better place now. So my house <laughs> is now this high off the ground uh, after living through the hurricane. So, okay. So I, um, after hurricane Ike, I went overseas. Uh, you know, I didn't know if I was going to have a job or anything else. My kids, my husband got this great position offer in Venezuela. We lived there for two years. I still kind of did, um, work for the university. I did some online stuff for them and I became an online ask a doc person. That was kind of fun. And I taught biology and chemistry and physics at the high school. I, I tutored and I had a great time doing all that, but I missed. So when I, we came back in 2011, I went back to work for the same university in the traditional full-time position. In 2018, I resigned from that so I could focus on the Galveston diet and I became a hospitalist for until June. So in June, I resigned from the hospitalist position because I didn't get clinic, I missed touching patients. And I am opening a private practice, gynecology only, no surgery, no, I'll refer out surgery, no OB. Those, those late nights are gone for me. I'm 53, I'm not gonna do that anymore. And um, I've delivered plenty of babies, I'm done. And uh, I'm building the clinic the way I want it. So I'll be seeing patients. Uh, I'm not accepting insurance. I am I'm going to be doing menopause work, counseling, nutrition, working through Galveston diet. I bought a very, very expensive but phenomenal body scanner um, that would allow you to see your belly fat, your percentage muscle, you know, so we can really track the non-scale victories through your lifestyle changes. It's going to be more of a wellness clinic. I'll be able to give hormones, you know, if you feel like you need them. Um, you know, do prescriptions, but I will refer out routine well woman care. You can do that with your regular gynecologist. So that clinic will be opening in October um, and I'm getting it all set up right now. I'm so excited. It is medicine the way I want to practice it two to three days a week. Um, and uh, I feel like I can make a bigger impact on my community and the patients who want to come see me this way. So, um, so it, the clinic will be outside of Houston in Friendswood. I'm not doing telemedicine at this point in clinic visits only. And, um, and I can only practice in Texas. I'm only licensed in Texas. So, um, am I, yes, we are definitely considering a retreat for the Galveston diet. It will be in Galveston as soon as we can get COVID under control. <laughs> and so I, you know, in my heart of hearts, cannot host an open event where I want to hug every single one of you who wants to come and see me and give you the biggest, wettest, sloppiest kiss and hug um, until we can get 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 this under better control. So I thought we were heading there and then the Delta. So um, this is going to happen, but it probably won't be till 2022, but we will be having a retreat here in Galveston for the Galveston diet. So, and just waiting for this to pass. Um, so yeah, I'm in Texas. Um, I'm not willing to put anybody at risk. So what kind of doctor should you go to with hair loss? That's a great question. Straight up, it's going to be dermatology. They're going to have the most expertise, the most, you know, and then call and see 
before you make that appointment, call ahead and say, does this dermatologist specialize in hair loss? Do they treat hair loss? You know, because sometimes they don't have any interest in hair loss. They just want to do acne or cosmetic or whatever. So call ahead, call ahead. So, um, okay. Let's see. Um, what can be done for hair loss thinning due to med medicine? So some medications can lead to hair loss. Talk to your doctor first, but you might also be a good candidate for minoxidil. For my patients who were going on chemotherapy, like we would do Latisse for their eyelashes to hang on to them as long as possible and their eyebrows and then some minoxidil for them to try to hold on to their hair as long as possible. Oh, what exactly is the Galveston diet? Oh, okay. So if you want to learn more about Galveston diet, you can always Google us at galvestondiet.com or if you go up here, oh, make sure you like this video. Thank you so much. Um, click on this link. It'll take you to my TikTok page. At the very top is a um, link. It's bolded and it'll have a link to the program, to our menopause quiz, to our inflammation quiz, to lots of great information there. Free meal plans, blogs, videos, all kind of good stuff there for you to see if you feel like the Allison diet might be a good fit for you. Um, okay, let's see. I'm going to do a few more questions and then I'm going to have to go. Um, does Lyrica cause weight gain? I think it can. I don't prescribe Lyrica. That's out of my scope of practice, but I think I, when I read up about it, that it was side of, uh, weight gain can be a side effect. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to hop off. Thank you so much. Please like and share this video. I really appreciate all of your support with the Galveston diet. Check us out at galvestondiet.com. And, oh gosh, if you are interested in our program, we have a TikTok code to save 10%. TikTok 10, T-I-K-T-O-K-1-0, T-I-K-T-O-K-1-0. How to break your sugar addiction. Um, if you go and Google sugar, um, you'll see I have a, um, you can sign up for, it's 10 emails on all about sugar addiction and how to break it and tips and tools and tricks that we've developed in the Galveston diet. Just Google sugar and um, we have great information there for you. So, all right, everybody, have a fabulous day and we'll chat again soon.